if you beat him. What do you mean? Yeah. When you beat him, what do you want to do next? Um, I don't know. I think uh, I've been wanting to fight Sakuraba for a long time. He'd be a really good one for me to beat as well. He's considered one of the top top guys in the world, especially um, the top Japanese guy. So I think uh, I would like to fight him sometime in the near future. Dan, let me ask you something. You're a very soft-spoken guy, mild-mannered guy, actually. What would really make you angry? What could a fighter do to, that could really make you angry? I don't know, probably just uh, not respect the rules, you know, and not show proper sportsmanship. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. Mm -hmm. So I, I like the respectful fighters the most. You mentioned the rules and how that may make you angry. Do you have any examples of people that may make you angry by disrespecting the rules? Uh, probably the one at the top of the list is Gilbert Vidal. That was evident in his last fight. Um, Vanderlei has been known to not respect the rules completely. So those are probably the two guys at the top of the list. Murillo Ninja Hua in the ring, focused, glad to be here, very excited. But I'll tell you, he picked an opponent in Dan Henderson. Whoa. Dan Henderson only has one loss and that was to Vanderlei, and that was by decision, and he put Vanderlei on the canvas and almost had Vanderlei out in that fight. Yeah, he's very well-rounded, a very good wrestler, very good positions, and his striking improved dramatically, so. I think that Ninja is gonna come out like he shot out of a cannon again, but he doesn't want to walk right into that right hand of Dan Anderson. Oh, no. Ninja's ready to go, look at him, he's ready to charge across the ring. And Dan, Throwing that right hand over the top, he flipped Ninja there and into the over-under clinch. This is where Dan Henderson wants Ninja, in this position. Dan coming from a, an illustrious Greco-Roman background. He can rough up an opponent from this uh, position. His teammate, who couldn't be here tonight because he had to fight in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, won because of his striking ability, and a lot of these wrestlers are learning strikes. I'm talking about Randy Couture, and Dan Henderson has got a huge right hand, and Murillo doesn't want to taste that right hand too many times. Yeah, Murillo's doing good now in protecting himself from the takedown, but I think sooner or later, Dan is gonna get the takedown in this position. Upper body, Greco. I would bet that Murillo actually did watch some tapes of Dan Henderson. He has to be. He would be really dumb if he wouldn't do it. But, I mean, that's it's a dangerous opponent. Look at this. Oh, what a beautiful takedown there by Dan Henderson in the side mount. A bad position for Murillo Ninja because Dan, uh, Murillo getting back up and Murillo, Dan throwing the knees. Oh, Dan pulling guard into a guillotine choke. But he, let's go. He only's, got, he's only got half of it. Now he had the arm in between. He had to let it go, which it was a very smart thing to do. Otherwise, he would have ended up in his guard. And Whoa. Murillo getting Dan down. Dan on the bottom now. Murillo yes. driving for the takedown. That's something we haven't seen we a lot. Yeah, Dan don't, on the bottom. Yeah, we don't see Dan Henderson get taken down too much. But he took some chances. He jumped into the guard while Murillo was standing. And he only had half the guillotine, as you said, boss, he had one arm in. And Dan elbowing to the hip there. Dan still got that arm loosely tied around Murillo's neck. But it's not gonna be a factor. Murillo is one of, is one of the shootbox guys that's very good on the ground. He's submitted a number of opponents with rear naked choke and with arm bar as well. All right, now, so let's see what's going to happen now. 
Yeah. First of all, he has to peel the hand off of uh, Henderson, uh, Henderson's left arm. And he can do it quite easy from here, from this position. And he should try to escape that half guard. Because right now, even, even though Henzo doesn't, I mean, uh, Henderson doesn't have... Okay, there now we go. Exactly. Simon. Oh, look at that. If the ropes weren't there, it's oh. a big if, though. It's a big if. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, now he's out. Ah, but still. It would be good if they restart in the center of the ring. No, but it would probably be good now, too. Yeah, Dan's uh, feet are getting caught up there in the, in the, the rope. Oh, that's thank you, ref. He's hearing me. I got you. Okay, good. They're going to restart the fighters on the ground. And it's good because I think the referee saw that Dan was going for the turn, and then, yeah, he got stopped by the rope. So um, it's, it's a fair play. I think it's good. Fair and, call. And Ninja going right back into the half guard of Dan Henderson. And now Han's going to trap this right arm, I think, again from Ninja, and then twist him over. Go for that turn that he just did. Oh no, of course not. Half guard. Hey, back Ninja. Of the head. Punches to the back of the head. Ninja fighting a lot more conservatively. Okay, now Ninja has got side control here. He's got side control, and Henderson could be in trouble if that left knee starts landing in his face. Now, this is the half guard. This is the position that had, uh, Dan just turned him, and he can do it again if he traps the right arm uh, of Ninja and then bridge with the right elbow on the hip and turn him. Okay, not now anymore. Okay, Ninja clearly in the side mount now. Dan Henderson on the bottom. Bridging up against the throat of Ninja and Dan throwing some knees from the bottom, but Ninja has his right arm there to protect against the knee. A real good tactical battle so far on the ground. I expect one or the other of the guys are going to explode into a move here. Dan's probably going to try and reverse his position. Neither guy has really caught the other guy with a clean shot so far. Dan should try to do the same move he just uh, did where he turned him with, but then the ropes were there. He should try to do the same thing right now. And I believe he's going to do it right now. He's got it. He can do it. Because Ninja, oh, Ninja oh. got the mount now. Ninja's got the mounted position. This could be a problem for Dan Henderson. We're going to see because Ninja is, a, like I said, he's a good grappler. I think he's, Dan's got to keep him locked up tight. And Dan's got to try and explode one way or another when Ninja gets some distance. He's got to try and buck Ninja off of him and explode to the side. Oh, half guard. Ninja gave up the amount of position. Yeah, if your opponent is on the bottom and you're in mount position, there's not a lot you can do if your opponent is holding you real tight. You can strike. You can return. Now, Ninja, oh. Ninja is really working a lot more than Henderson is right now. He's changing positions. He's changed from mount to half guard and then now to side mount again. And he's grinding down. He's basically just trying to grind um, Dan Henderson in what is so far a jiu-jitsu match, a submission wrestling match. And he's doing it real good. He's going for the head with the knees. He's pushing the head from Dan backwards with the elbow. It's a perfect game plan. I think that Ninja may have a lot of respect for Dan's striking ability. Otherwise, he might just try and stand back up. But he doesn't seem to want to do that. He seems to want, he seems to, want to grapple with Dan. But he's in a good position. He's right now, he's very dominant. He's uh, dead, the knees to the head. He connects a few times now. He uh, just connected also with the left knee to the body. Now, should he, he should make more. Those knees are being blocked by Dan's arm, but still he's taking the impact of the knees on the arm. And that could be a factor when they're standing. Yeah, again, I'm coming again. Dan should trap Ninja's right arm, put the right, his right elbow on his hip, and turn him over. It could be a turn right there now. Ninja trying various hip positions but doesn't seem to be working toward a submission at this point. He just seems to be trying to out-wrestle Dan, and he's doing a good job of, of just that. He's doing a real good job. <laughs> Would have thought this. But, hey, the fight's not over yet. And um, we know Dan. He's been in bad situations and made phenomenal comebacks. Yes, he has, because Van really came out and knocked him down within seconds of their fight, and then... Dan turned the tables on Vanderlei in the same round and had him on the deck. Ooh, that was a good knee. And again, these are the reigning knees. 
Dan Henderson at 30 years of age. Actually, Dan is 31 years old. He's 10 years older than Ninja, but Dan is one of the best conditioned athletes in the sport, so I don't think that stamina is going to be a factor. No, but last time we saw Muriel and Ninja also against Matsui, and it, it, it looked like he didn't slow down either. He went full, full power all the time, straight on. Oh, no. Don't He's doing a good job with the knees to the head, but I think for him to be effective, he should throw some white knees to the body, too. Mm -hmm. I agree. He's got to uh, remain flat and then throw the right knee to the body. So just a different tactic. He seems to be primarily concerned with striking with that left knee. Yep, Hannah's doing a few knees back. He's kicking the area. Murillo, but from that distance, he cannot really... Penetrate. Both men are very relaxed. Oh, he oh, looks submission. Right, he looks like he's going for oh. it. Oh, good knee by Henderson from the bottom. Very nice. Two minutes left in the fight. And this could be an escape time. Oh, the side show coming up. It's been more toward Ninja, but Dan is still firing back and from Luke's the side bottom. side choke is coming up. Oh, you see? He's not going to side choke Dan, I don't believe. No, but he's working for it, that's for sure. Yeah, the thing is that Ninja is controlling the action. He's, he's ahead in the round because he is initiating the attacks. He's the one changing position. Dan not in imminent trouble here being submitted or, or struck. You see, this is a perfect spot here for the, the right knee to the, to the kidney area, to the side. Well, also, the liver is located, by the way. Hey, you like those liver shots, Ross? I know you do. I've seen your instruction tapes, and you talk about liver shots half the tape. Yeah, that's good. One minute. One minute. I think Dan is just holding on now, go, and really wants to get into the second round. He's going to make a game plan. This fight's not going to go to the ground anymore. That's or I'm going to be up top. Well, one thing that Dan has done is he's defended against Ninja's attack on the ground. He, I think that Ninja got the round though, right, because Ninja took Henderson down. He took him down, and he's all the way over him. He's changing positions, going from right, side mount, side mount, half guard. He, he's been in every position. Oh, Dan getting back up. Dan got Ninja in a headlock. Dan spinning. Whoa. I didn't expect that. I, I didn't expect that. That was good, actually. That was good, and Dan testing Ninja, testing his resolve to keep him on the ground, and Ninja did just that. He kept Dan Henderson down. We've got mere seconds left in this, the third, the first round of this highly anticipated duel. Oh! Well, now that was interesting because the bell, did the bell ring? The bell rang, but I think the bell rang on, he kicked on the bell, I think. Yeah, I guess it was, uh, did he Did he catch a yellow card? No. But it, it seemed like he, did he catch, kick Dan out. Dan has got a problem with people that break rules, and um, I, I don't know that, that, the fight was still happening, right? No, I don't know. We uh, we got a rerun, but in the rerun, unfortunately, we cannot hear the bell, so we don't know. But I think it was or on the same thing, or maybe a second later, so, and it's the heat of the moment, you know I mean? It's not like a, a thing that he did on purpose. Fortunately for Henderson, it wasn't that hard of a strike. I think Ninja threw it half-heartedly because he knew the round was basically going to be over. Yeah, no, actually, he kicked him with the, with the lower part of the shin, and it, I, I think when we're going to see the rerun of it, uh, it, was, it was a good kick. It was a good kick. Okay, here's the replay, and... Dan reversing Ninja's takedown attempt and getting side mount early on. And, but Ninja popping back up and getting standing and taking a couple of knees. Dan Henderson jumping into guard, but he, but he had the arm in. Ninja's left arm was under Dan Henderson's right armpit, so the guillotine, so it wouldn't have been a submission from that position. So Dan did give up, but he got his legs in bad position and Ninja tripped him down, got the takedown into Dan's guard right here. Yeah. And then. Then shouldn't have uh, got for the guillotine. Now that was a good knee there, coming straight down. Ninja's throwing knees from the side down, which was very interesting. Usually guys on the on the ground see that he's going to do a side knee. Wow, that's very very technical. It, it looked like a tiny knee, but then from the laying position. Exactly. I guess we're not going to get a uh, 
a, a, a recap of that uh, last kick, huh? Right. But it Maybe. Doesn't, doesn't seem to be a factor because Dan looks fresh. Yeah. Dan, I don't think Dan was, was hurt that much, if at all, by that kick. But round two coming up. I'm, th I'm thinking these guys are going to stand up for a little while in this round. Two, two. Oh, and Ninja's going to come out again. He really wants to go. Dan throwing the right hand, and Ninja firing back. Now they're, they're Grecoed up here, over under. Now Dan, oh, that was beautiful, that was beautiful. Dan went for a high knee, Ninja scooped under that leg and took him down. Good reflexes. Absolutely. You cannot do that, evidently, to a Muay Thai guy from the Shootbox Academy. Can't go with that high knee. Yeah, yeah, at the pier, so. <laughs> now Dan, back on the bottom, really, Probably was better off standing up with the uh, ninja. Yeah. Took a huge chance, got taken down as a result. Ninja got the takedown, and the judges look at that and give it a nod because that does count toward the scoring. Yeah, now we got going around thinking what, what is the next move I'm going to do. Anderson bridging straight up under Ninja's neck. Ninja turning his head. And that would be a good point for Dan to knee with the left. Like high on the chest here, under the, underneath the armpit. Mm -hmm. could, could be. Oh, he's coming up with his knees again. There we go. And now actually he's writing it to the body. So he learned from it. The referee going to restart the fighters back toward the center of the ring. Ninja clearly in control on the ground in the side mount, but Henderson's still dangerous. Henderson has got to watch out for the knees from the side mount, but I think he's got a pretty decent defense on that. Henderson has vastly improved uh, uh, mixed martial art player since he's been in the Pride Fighting Championships. Uh, he lost his first Pride fight to Vandalay via decision, but then came back and was the first man to ever knock out. Oh, look Almost at this. A, a leg lock, he's going for a leg lock. He's going for a toe hold, it looked like. Oh, that was a, a good knee there. But we, at least we have action on the ground. Oh, no, we can't say anything. But this fight is an action -packed fight. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But as I was saying, Dan is the first man to ever stop one of the Gracies. He knocked out Henzel Gracie. And he also was the first man to ever stop Akira Shoji, and he knocked him out. So Dan Henderson made the adjustments uh, from rings rules and from other organizations into fighting in the Pride Fighting Championships. And he's doing well, but Ninja is jumping away with his right elbows to the midsection of Dan Henderson. He gave him a lot. He gave like 10, 15 of them. And he's doing it again now. But he knows if he brings his head up too high, he's gonna get kneed in the head. Because that's where Dan is waiting for. Yeah, Dan's got a clear shot, it seems, with that left knee. But Ninja in control again. There's Jose Pele Landi in Ninja's corner. Pele is Ninja's teacher. And Pele is a legend in Brazil, in Valley Tudo, and he fought here in Pride as well. Yeah, it looks like um, this fight will stay on the ground now in this round. Let's we'll see what round number three is going to have in pedal for us. Well, I have to say that Ninja is not fi fighting with the wild abandon he did with Daijiro Matsu. I think he's got a little bit more respect for Her Henderson than he did Matsu. Yeah, I think if you go full power with a guy like Henderson, Henderson's going to escape the situation there because he's a good wrestler. So uh, you cannot really go for elbows all the way, from all the way up, all the way down, because then you create a hole which Henderson can use to escape. <laughs> Knee to the head. You see, Henderson is just waiting. Henderson trying to, oh, Henderson almost eating a roundhouse kick, a soccer kick. Now Ninja teeing up there with that knee, and now Ninja gonna go up and try and soccer kick him. Dan getting back up, now we're gonna see some action. He shouldn't do the, go for the guillotine because then he can, oh, now he's gonna be on top. No, Ninja's got a good takedown. Yeah, but, yeah, oh. Dan's got a good position, look at that sprawl, boss. And Dan standing back up, now they're back up. Wow, at the end of the run, look at Dan this. Dan getting oh, the underhook takedown there, under the leg and down.
it wasn't a body slam like this. Thirty ninjas. seconds left. He should hurry up if he wants to do something. Dan's got a really good position. Dan's just got to the knees here. Throw the knee. Right there, there's one. But Ninja gets back up. Strong. Ninja is very strong. A lot of energy standing back up. Dan oh. gives up another takedown. Ninja with a good trip there. Dan in full, uh, actually half butterfly guard and full guard now. Wow. Whoa. Some interesting action there in round two. Ninja in control for most of the round, but then Henderson getting busy and standing back up, and Ninja got another takedown. I would have to say that Ninja is in control of this fight. Yeah, he is. Uh, he definitely is. Uh, we got round number three coming up. Um, if Dan wants to win this fight, he, he's got to... He's got to hurt some, Ninja. Yeah, he's got to hurt him. He's got to submit him or KO him. Or be like total dominating in the last round. Here it is, that scooping underhook and flip down by Ninja. Wow. That was a beautiful move. Dan took a chance with a high knee here, and it was right under the, the it, it missed the head, and Ninja just clipped the leg and took him down. Beautiful. Beautiful thing. Yeah, man, that, these are people with good reflexes. You see nowadays it evolves so much, the fighters are so good. It's crazy. And a guy like this at 21 years old with this kind of skill, he can only go up from here. Yeah, listen, I, I, I started uh, at 29 with my uh, submissions. <laughs> so this but, guy got seven years of hat. <laughs> yeah, you, did, you did pretty damn good, actually. I did, I did, I did, I did. But I was, yeah, a striker from origin. And don't forget, folks, on January 5th, the Pride Fighting Championship returns to pay-per-view with Cold Fury 2, and there are big rumors about Ken Shamrock. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. It's not for sure, but we're hearing rumblings no, about, about Ken Shamrock, and we're hearing rumblings about other people, but we'll get no. into that later, too. January 5th, Pride Fighting Champions from Cold Fury 2. But tonight, we're already seeing some great fights, including Ninja pictured there against Dan Henderson. Right, fighting championships, championship chaos coming at you from Tokyo Dome. Steven Quadros with Boss Rutten. Here we go, round three. Ninja versus Dan Henderson. They touch gloves. Are we gonna see a stand-up war in this run? There's the right hand by Henderson. Oh, they got the underhook. Oh no, uh, Henderson's got the underhook. Henderson seems to be getting tired here. If Henderson gives up another takedown, then I know that fatigue is starting to set in. Nice turn there. Ooh, in the groin. That was a knee in the groin. Oh, another knee in the groin. I think we're going to have a little stop here. We got a yellow card. Oh. In case you don't know, folks, you cannot knee below the belt in the Pride Fighting Championships. We do have rules here. Knees to the groin or punches to the, any kind of strike to the groin is not legal. Uh, we have other rules such as no headbutting. Obviously, no biting. There's no elbows to the head. There's no punching behind the head. And Henderson will get up to five minutes. And here's here we go. A replay. Uh, it looks like a left knee right up to the middle. And Henderson, Winston Payne. Then he took a body shot there. Yeah, the first one was a hit for sure. And the second one was in the same area, but trust me, once you're hit there, you don't want to get hit. Yeah, even when you have in the, in the same area. a cup on, it still hurts because, well, to put it lightly, things can shift around down there. Yeah, you don't know what, uh, what's going on there. So we do have a little bit of a slowdown. But what is that with that new magazine that you're coming out with? What is that? Oh, my new magazine? Yeah. Well, starting February 2000, uh, there will be a new magazine, new fight magazine in the United States uh, called Black Belt Presents Fight Sport with Stephen Quadros, and it's going to cover all the great fighting events, including the Pride Fighting Championships. And I am the editor, and it's going to be a lot of fun. 
I uh, very much look forward to seeing that magazine. It will be kind of Maxim style. It'll be up in the newsstands next to all the great magazines. I heard you got a, like a ring girl competition going on also or something like that. Yeah, they're competing to be in a magazine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And what do they have to do for that? Well, that's a good question. Dan Henderson is ready to come back into the fight. And his, uh, Ninja's corner is telling Ninja to kick. Uh, notice how quickly that referee gave that yellow card to protect the safety of the fighters. In pride, that is what's most important, is the safety of the fighters. Now they're in that clinch again. Dan Henderson getting a good judo hip turn takedown there. But I, I really don't think he wants to stay down with Ninja. He's on top finally. He's in the side mount. Ninja. Ninja's already pushing his arm under. He's going to escape. There he goes. What a great escape. Going for a single there. Ninja is Dan kneeing. Not much on that knee. Another knee by Henderson. Now, are they going to trade punches? Will we see punches here, folks? Let's go. Let's let it hang out, Danny. Yeah, Dan has got to work. He's got to work, 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 because otherwise he's not going to win the fight. No, he's got to hurt Ninja. He's got to really knock Ninja around and, and probably finish Ninja. He's got to finish Ninja to get the victory because Ninja seems to be ahead. Dan Henderson with a gorgeous takedown. Another hip throw. It's judo is so hard when you're bare chest with Bob. Sweat is a factor. Oh, look at this. He's through the head again. But Ninja. Henderson with the uppercut. Ninja's mouthpiece is out. Another uppercut by Henderson. They're trading here. Oh. Henderson with a big punch. Oh. Henderson oh. getting Ninja in trouble. Henderson's got a big oh. right hand. Big oh. right hand by Henderson. Henderson's got Ninja in trouble. Exactly oh. what he said he needs. The crowd's really into this. Ninja needs to take Henderson down. Big knee coming up. No. Oh, he faked it. What, what a, a flight. Flight. What a flurry by Dan Henderson. Henderson taking complete control with that big right hand and also a left hook. He's going to keep working. If he wants to win this fight, he's going to keep working. Push him away and keep going. He's not going to win a fight like this now. He's got to finish him. He's got to finish Ninja. This is going to be a tough call now for the referee or for the actually for the judges. Although Ninja does have the first two rounds, but Ninja seems to be rocked here. He spit his mouthpiece out after one of those punches. Henderson should back up. Start punching. He, and start pu unload. Just unload everything he's got. Dan Henderson exploding as we knew he would. Yep. Dan Henderson is dangerous to okay now. This is not gonna be good for Ninja. This is not gonna be good for Ninja at all. Because, excuse me, because Dan Henderson can knock him out right here. Oh, actually, it was Dan Henderson's oh, mouthpiece. We see it. Right, it was Dan Henderson's mouthpiece. Ninja yeah. with a high kick, but it was a lazy high kick. Dan with a crushing right hand there. Ninja is in trouble here. Dan going for a, another judo takedown, but Dan's getting a little winded here. Dan needs to sneak that uppercut in up against the rope. And a double oh. leg takedown, but Dan on top. Dan needs to throw that knee now. Got to throw that knee now. Okay, the referee's gonna restart him closer. Send him the ring again. What a tremendous round this has turned out to be. Yeah, actually, it's quite unbelievable because we thought the fighter was out, but the fighter was still burning. He was still spinning. Uh, okay, Henderson, he's gonna go. throw the knee. Throw the knee now. Throw the knee. Ninja, gonna get another double leg. Uh oh, he's got it. No, nope, he doesn't. Oh, Dan pulling guard. Dan's not gonna get him on the submission here. No, I don't believe that. One minute. One minute left. I don't think we're gonna see a change. I think they're gonna be in this position. Probably for the next uh, 60 seconds. Was it enough? I don't think so. I don't think that flurry by Henderson was enough. Yeah, but in the rules meeting, uh, the referee said the scoring is not by the rounds, it's about, about the whole fight. So, uh, and last time we saw with uh, Guy Metzger, 
I know, that he went to, but he didn't do good in the last round. He lost the fight, actually, so we don't know how to score. Well, here we have another Brazilian against American, uh, another wrestler against a, a Muay Thai guy. Well, well actually, they say Muay Thai, but Ninja obviously is a little bit more than Muay Thai. He's a really good grappler. He's a really good wrestler. He's a good submission guy. Yeah, he's got the whole package. Look at his elbows. They said that Dan Henderson was a complete fighter, but he fought another complete fighter in Rua Ninja Hua. I would have to say that Ninja survived the onslaught in that round, and it's probably going to win this decision. Yeah, I think so, too. I feel he wins the decision, but I have to say the comeback from Dan was <laughs> amazing. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. His skills were extraordinary. There, there's that uppercut. Uh, there's, excuse me. There's that uppercut by Henderson. Henderson wailing away, and a lot of those punches didn't land clean except for the uppercut. That one did. That right hand of Dan's. He doesn't throw it straight. He curves it a little bit. Ninja really tough, defending well from the onslaught, rolling with the punches for the most part. Henderson only landed about two or three of those solid, but nonetheless, that, see, that's the tight little uppercut there. It's when Dan uh, wings his punches like that that he gives the other guy a little bit of a chance to duck out of the way. Well, what an energy. Look at this. <laughs> this is going like 300%. Wow. Cracking right hand. Dan must be thinking, wow, what's holding this guy up? We're going to have a split decision here. Dan Henderson pulled it out in the third round. He pulled it out in the third round. Henderson gets a split decision in a war over Rilla Ninja Hua. And then they go to a race. Uh, Ninja seems pretty disappointed in the decision. Yeah, you can say that again. But I guess, like I said before, the last time with um, uh, Guy Metzger, it was exactly the same. Guy was dominating the first two rounds. And then uh, his opponent had a great comeback in the third round. That's why I said, you know, in the rules meeting that they said, uh, Dan almost threw that t-shirt right in my face here. Okay, oh, there, yeah. there is the knee, and here's Dan with the uppercuts grinding away. Dan, it was the boxing, it was the boxing that did it here as he unloaded on Ninja, and evidently the judges thought that was enough, at least two of them did, because one of them ruled it for Ninja. I would like to see a rematch of this fight. Yeah, this fight was a good. great fight. Look at this. To Ninja's credit, he didn't fold under that attack. He didn't go down. He kept rolling with the punches. Henderson probably really learned from this fight, as I know Ninja did. His comeback was like, that nah, was tremendous. I mean, who could have expected that? What a comeback in round three. Another great one in the books for Dan Hollywood Henderson.